Today we'll be learning about linear measure. Specifically, we're going to be talking about betweenness. It's a word that you may have heard at least part of, and that is between, but now we're going to learn about betweenness. The first thing we need to understand is what is a line segment? A line segment is part of a line. It's a segment. It is a short portion. A line goes forever and ever. A line segment is part of a line with two endpoints. In our picture here, we have A and we have B. That's where our line segment starts and ends. So a line segment has a definite beginning and a definite end. Similarly to a line, a line segment has a label. It is the segment or the line without the arrows on it over the two letters of the line segment. So for this one, it would be AB or you could use BA. Remember with lines and line segments, the order of the letters is not important. We would read this as segment AB or segment BA. Now sometimes it is written simply as AB without this line above it. When it is written without the line segment above it, it means we're talking specifically about the measure of or the length of segment AB. So we want to know how long is AB. So that is very specific. When there is no line symbol above the top of it, we're looking for length. When we have the line segment above it, we're just talking about the shape or the object. So in this example here, we have just the AB without the segment symbol above it, so it wants to know how long is AB. What is the length of AB? Well, we can easily tell from the picture here, AB is 23 feet. So that's what we write for the answer. AB equals 23 feet. We do not put the segment symbol. Next, we've all used rulers before, but sometimes we have some struggles with it. If you do have questions or problems about how to re read the ruler, make sure you stop in to ask. Rulers will be commonly used in geometry, so it is a vital skill that we know how to use. As you notice here, we have line segment AB. We know it's a line segment because there's no arrows on the end. So we're going to try and find how far is it from A to B. Remember when doing this that we don't start at the 1. We want to start at the 0. And also, we like to put the beginning of the ruler in the center of the dot, or as close to it as we can. Sometimes it's not possible, but we do the best we can. Just shifting it a little bit left or right can change your measurements. If you're in any of your tech ed classes, the more specific or more precise you can be with your measuring, the better your projects will turn out. So you'll notice here, I start at the zero, I go one full, so here's one, here's two, so I've gone two full inches, but we did not make it all the way to the third inch. We're close, but we did not make it all the way there. So now we need to realize or look and see how far did we actually make it. I've enlarged it here and you'll notice we start at the two and we're way over here at the end. Well, we kind of want to find similar sized lines and then count them out. So we are at the one, two, three, four, five, six, seventh line across out of eight total. So we would say we are two and seven eighths inches. 
Now, if you remember from algebra, we said we do not use mixed fractions much anymore. We tend to use just improper fractions. Here is a case where our mixed fractions are still okay. B is between A and C, if and only if. Now we hear the word between. Between is a tricky word to describe because when you try and describe it, you end up using it in its definition. So we often hear people say, well, I am between those two people. Well, what does between mean? Between means two conditions. One, A, B, and C have to be collinear. So you cannot be between two things if you are not on the same line as them. Second, if you add up the distance from A to B and the distance of B to C, you're going to equal the whole line. Two small parts equal the one large part. This would not work if B was not between. Here's your example. If A was here and B was up here and C was down here, if I was to connect A to C, we can see that if I add AB and BC, it definitely is not going to equal AC. So in order for that to be true, they all have to be collinear. Our last term for today is a new term to you, I'm sure, and that is congruent. You'll notice the symbol for congruent looks a lot like the equal sign. That's because congruent and equal mean very, very similar things. There is one small but important difference. Congruent means same shape and same size. Equals, we just think about being the same size. My age is equal to your age. My height is equal to your height. That type of a thing. Well, now when we're talking about congruent, we're talking about the shape and the size. So in this picture, we have, are these segments congruent? We have segment AB on the left, which is five inches. Segment CD on the right, which is also five inches. So are they congruent? Yes, they are. They are both segments and they both have the same length. When we talk about congruency, we will often use these two little marks here that just showed up that are called congruency marks, often referred to as tick marks. Both of these lines have one tick mark, which means they are the same size. If I was to draw another line, we will call it YZ, and I put one tick mark on it, then it would be fair to say that YZ is five inches as well because it has one tick mark just like the other two lines. Another question here, are these two segments congruent? We have two lines which look a lot like railroad tracks. Do you think they're congruent? They sure look like it. The answer is no. There is not enough information to say they are congruent. We do not assume length of measure, so we cannot tell exactly how long they were. In the previous example, we knew they were both five inches, so we knew they were, they were congruent. If I was to add two lines on there, two lines on there, they now would have an equal number of tick marks and now we could say they were congruent. However, 
Without that piece of information, we do not have enough information to say they are congruent. Again, if you have any questions, please stop in and talk to me 